Hey everyone, Zach Brown here, and today we're talking about the Web Presenter HD from Black Magic. Now that we've had it for a couple months and we've been using it every single week to live stream our services, I wanted to give you kind of an idea of what I like, what I don't like about this video encoder, and then also help you maybe make a decision on which video encoder is right for you and why this one might be a better option over some other popular video encoders like Resi and Boxcast, for example, especially in church circles. So if you are in the market for a new hardware encoder, hopefully Hopefully this video will help you make a better decision. Anyway, with that being said, let's go ahead and hop into what I like about the Web Presenter HD from Blackmagic. So the first thing that I like about the Web Presenter HD is just the simplicity factor to it. It's very simple. You know, really, you can pull it right out of the box, maybe update the firmware, and then you can go live as soon as you have a video input and then an internet connection. It's really that simple. Obviously, I would suggest plugging it up to your network. If you have your ATEM switchers on a network, plug it into that network uh, so then you can control the settings from the computer, things like that if you wanna do that. But you don't have to. You can just, you know, plug it in, go live, it's pretty simple. Now, I don't have a whole lot of experience with other hardware encoders, so I'm sure that a lot of the other options out there are simple and easy to use as well, similar to this one, but that is one of the things I like about this. It's very simple. We were able to pull it out of the box and get it up and running in no time. Another thing that I really love is just how you're able to monitor the live stream on this encoder. It's super nice to have this monitor out right next to everything else that we're doing regarding the live stream. So real quickly, at a glance, we can know, you know what frame rate we're shooting at, what resolution size we're at, if we're on or off air, and then audio levels, you know, video playback, all those things. Uh, it's really nice to have uh, right there at a glance, all of that information. I really enjoy having the audio levels right there as well, because we're mixing our entire live stream audio off of this iMac through Logic, and then we're sending that through the switcher and then to the web presenter. And we can real quickly at a glance, just know what our overall output volume is from there. And we can see it And everyone who's mixing the live stream, they have a set range of decibels that they can hit or they want to be in the ballpark of um, and so they can easily quickly reference that with big audio meters uh, you know which is nice you can easily see where you're at and if you know you transition from worship to then uh, someone speaking you're gonna you're gonna see the difference in audio levels and you'll be able to adjust that accordingly another little cool feature about this encoder is the little webcam out here USB-C that you can easily plug into a computer or something like that and be able to take the video feed from this and turn it into like a webcam input anything like that so basically this is a hardware encoder but it's also a capture card as well so you could go out of the webcam out of this and you could stream from Ecamm Live or OBS or anything like that if you wanted to. So that's like an option if you wanted to do that for some reason or you wanted to bring this video feed into a Zoom call or something like that. Or if you wanted to record or some kind of you know redundancy stream from your computer instead of if you didn't have a hyperdeck or if you you know have a separate recording outside of using a hyperdeck or something like that. Um, that's a possibility there. I kind of like that. That's cool because you know if you're not using one of those L Elgato capture cards. Um, most capture cards are like 300 bucks. Um, so, you know, it's it's almost more worthwhile to get like an A10 mini or, um, or then if you get this, there's a $300 capture card uh, basically already inside of this thing uh, that you get on top of that. So if you ever need that kind of functionality, it's kind of cool to have. And speaking of software encoders, this is gonna give you a little bit higher streaming quality than something like Ecamm Live or OBS, for example. They compress the footage a little bit more in order to actually stream it from your computer so having a hardware encoder something like this um, is always nice to have for just a little bump in quality last little thing that I want to touch on as far as things that I like about this encoder is just the network connectivity aspect to it now I'm sure you could probably do this with a couple other hardware encoders as well but it's nice that this Ethernet port here can accomplish a couple different things at the same time so we plug this up to a small little network that we're running we have internet running through that and then we have the ATEM switcher running through that as well and then we we have a couple computers hooked up to it and then we added this guy to it so basically what that does is through this one ethernet port we're able to get internet to this encoder so that we're able to actually stream but then also we can connect it to a computer or something like that on the network and then be able to control the settings and things like that all from one computer for people who already have the web presenter hd i'm sure that's how most people are running it but in case you just happen to be unaware of that i thought that was something worth pointing out we actually hardly ever go to the front interface of this and click around and change the settings on this Everything that we do for the ATEM switcher and then also for the Web Presenter HD is all on the computer, either through the ATEM control software or 
through the setup software that comes for the web presenter from Blackmagic. So now let's talk about a couple of the things that I don't particularly like about this encoder. So the first kind of critique that I have of the web presenter is that uh, there's just no integration with the ATEM control software. And that's kind of similar to what I was talking about just a minute ago with how we control all of our settings off of the computer. It would be nice if that was integrated into the ATEM control software because we already have that up every single time uh, we live stream anyway. So instead of opening two windows up, we could just have one window open and be able to control all the settings and then go on air and off air all from the same application, switch cameras if we wanted to from the same application, you know, change any switcher settings, things like that. It would be nice to be able to do that all from one software instead of having two windows open. And what's funny is that there's still um, some compatibility with the HyperDex into the ATEM control software. You can rec start recording to the SD card of the HyperDeck from the ATEM control software. So uh, I feel like they can do that if they put out like a software update and they put out a firmware update maybe um, for the web presenter. I feel like they're, there's, they definitely can uh, integrate that. They just haven't yet. So that's kind of one thing. It's not that big of a deal, but having two windows open just takes up more space on your computer monitor and it would just be a simpler workflow if everything you know was controlled out of one application so black magic if you are watching this i would love an update to that uh, being able to control every aspect of the web presenter from the atem control software would be super cool the other con that i have is just that there's no real resilient streaming like you do for other companies like resi and boxcast now i think that's all right because with this you're just buying the unit 500 dollars. that's it no monthly subscription things like that which i'm pretty sure you need for resi or boxcast if you want to do that you know super resilient streaming you know delayed by like two minutes or something like that this doesn't have that now if you do get disconnected from the internet when using this it does a good job of reconnecting as soon as possible and then jumping right back into it and honestly, in using this, we haven't ever felt like we needed some kind of super resilient uh, streaming. You know, as long as you have a decent internet connection and we don't have the fastest internet by any means, but it does the job and it does it pretty well. And if you are having trouble, um, you know, with your stream, you can bump down the resolution to help make that stream go a little bit smoother. So you don't get the resilient streaming with the Web Presenter HD, but you do get this at a much more affordable price point than Resi or Boxcast, things like that. When you do get that resilient streaming, option from them. So to wrap up this video, I want to talk about who the Web Presenter HD is actually for. Uh, first off, if you have Resi or Boxcast or something like that, continue with what you got. You know, you already have additional features that doesn't come uh, with this. And so if you're happy with that, go ahead and run with it. The other person I don't think this is for. If you're running something like the A10 Mini or the A10 Mini Pro or A10 Mini Extreme ISO, you know, et cetera, that whole line of switchers, because those are all HDMI switchers and most of them already have an encoder built in. So you don't really Really need the external encoder. So who do I actually recommend this to? Well, I think if you have an SDI switcher from Blackmagic, like the ATEM Television Studio HD, but you're maybe streaming from a computer, or you're doing software encoding of some kind, uh, even maybe if you're streaming through ProPresenter, it might still be worth taking a look at this guy right here because it's very affordable. Uh, it's a good you know, entry point to hardware encoding. Um, and I think you'll be very happy with it and the simplicity of it. So depending on your situation, if you already have an SDI switcher from Blackmagic and you're just doing software encoding at this point, but you wanna jump into the world of hardware encoding, this is the guy that I think you should take a look at first um, and it's gonna be a great entry point and uh, you know a pretty affordable entry point as well compared to some other hardware encoders that are already out there anyway so that pretty much does it for me I just wanted to make a quick little review of the web presenter HD and uh, give you some thoughts as to whether or not this would best suit kind of your needs and what you're looking for uh, for a video encoder and if you have any more questions about the web presenter HD let me know leave them down in the comments because um, I'm planning on making a couple more videos about this encoder uh, maybe going through a setup guide things like that so if you have any questions regarding the setup process or any other thing about the web presenter leave them below and I'll check those out anyway so that's pretty much gonna do it for me here if you like this video uh, please leave a like subscribe things like that uh, because it helps push this video to other people that would gain value from it as well so that is appreciated uh, also if you're 
you're looking for more in-depth training regarding digital media and how to best utilize it in your church, uh, well, you can click the first link in the description below and uh, check out some more in-depth step-by-step training guides uh, that we've put out uh, specifically about church video and how to shoot high quality video for your church and how to get started quickly with ProPresenter 7. So if you're interested in either of those uh, to fast track your progress in shooting video or ProPresenter, the links will be in the description for those. So with that being said, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next video.